Today we delve into Brian's extensive supplement stack, a collection of over 40 supplements that could practically constitute a meal in itself. Ashwagandha, scientifically known as Withania somnifera, is derived from the root of a shrub native to India and other parts of Asia. This herb has enjoyed a prominent place in the Indian Ayurvedic system for centuries. Renowned as an adaptogenic herb, ashwagandha belongs to a category of plants and mushrooms known for aiding the body in responding to stress, anxiety, fatigue and promoting overall well-being, all while being generally well tolerated. Beyond its historical reputation, Ashwagandha boasts a rich antioxidant content, endowing it with anti-inflammatory properties and purportedly the ability to address infertility concerns. As you can see, Ashwagandha is touted as a Swiss army knife. I'm always skeptical when a supplement can achieve everything and even take out the trash for you. Let's see what science says about this herb and in the end I will tell you my experience after trying Ashwagandha for a month. Plenty of research demonstrates that ashwagandha lowers the stress hormone cortisol. Studies on ashwagandha in the context of stress not only reveal reduced cortisol levels, but also a significant shift towards relaxation in participants. Researchers measured this transformation by asking participants about their stress levels before and after taking ashwagandha for two to three months. Interestingly, participants not only reported lower perceived stress, but also experienced decreased anxiety levels and improved sleep quality. This stress reduction was observed both in healthy individuals and those dealing with mental illnesses. Ashwagandha's calming effect is not just about lowering cortisol. It also stimulates the GABA neurotransmitter in the brain, contributing to an overall sense of calm. However, if your main goal in taking ashwagandha is stress reduction, it's wise not to rely solely on the supplement. Before turning to supplements, consider incorporating exercise, more sleep and other stress management techniques. Research on both athletes and regular people has shown that ashwagandha can boost something called maximum oxygen consumption or VO2 max for short. This is a measure of how much oxygen your body can take in during exercise. You might wonder why the level of VO2 max matters for regular people who aren't professional athletes. Well, it turns out that the VO2 max is a key factor in predicting how long you might live. In a European study, they found that for every milliliter increase in VO2 max, there was a 2.8% drop in the risk of overall mortality and a 3.2% decrease in the risk of heart disease. This means even a small boost in VO2 max, which ashwagandha might help with, can actually make a big difference in your long-term health. Ashwagandha isn't just about fitness. It has some potential in mental health too. Studies looked at using ashwagandha alongside traditional medications for conditions like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. And in just four weeks, it showed promise in reducing symptoms and improving cognition in patients who are usually tough to treat. But, and it's an important but, these studies are smaller, involving usually around 50 to 60 patients. So if you're thinking about adding ashwagandha to your mental health plan, please talk it over with your doctor first. Ashwagandha also plays a role in influencing testosterone levels in men. This effect is believed to occur through ashwagandha's ability to decrease cortisol levels as elevated cortisol signals the body to produce less testosterone. Additionally, a smaller study observed an increase in strength among untrained individuals potentially linked to the rise in testosterone associated with the ashwagandha supplementation. Furthermore, in certain lower quality studies, ashwagandha was explored as a treatment for infertile men, demonstrating an ability to enhance both sperm quality and quantity. Sleep. A review of five studies, including 400 participants, suggests a small improvement in sleep quality. However, these studies had some mythological errors and included too few older individuals a group more prone to experiencing insomnia. Unlike in my previous videos where I missed talking about doses, 
For ashwagandha, the best amount seems to be 250 to 300 milligrams once or twice a day, or a single dose of 500 milligrams. A study comparing 300 milligrams to 600 milligrams daily found better results with a higher amount. When you take it, morning or night, doesn't seem to matter. You can take it with or without food, but some people prefer taking it with meals for better tolerance. As for side effects, they're usually mild and might include a bit of drowsiness, stomach discomfort, weight gain, rash, flatulence and loose stools. Importantly, there are no studies on the use of ashwagandha in children. A downside of ashwagandha is that we don't know if it is safe to use for longer periods than three months, as the studies typically stopped after this time period. I recommend Brian and others to consider taking breaks every two to three months. Another thing to keep in mind is that ashwagandha's effects take a while to show up, usually between three to four weeks, which might not be ideal for those looking for quick results. There are specific groups who should be cautious about ashwagandha. A small study with 50 people hinted at ashwagandha having a minor effect on the thyroid. If you're on thyroid medication or have thyroid issues, please talk to your doctor before trying it. The same applies to people with high blood pressure. To show how strong ashwagandha can be, there's a case study of a kidney transplant recipient who, after two trouble-free years, had an acute organ reaction within two weeks of using ashwagandha. This incident led to a return to dialysis and shows ashwagandha's potent immune-stimulating effects. Pregnant women should avoid ashwagandha, and it's important to note that most studies have mostly involved men, so the results might not apply as well to women. Upon shopping for ashwagandha supplements, you may stumble across the label KSM66. This label certifies that the ashwagandha supplement has been sourced from ashwagandha roots, the way traditional Ayurveda uses ashwagandha. If a supplement lacks this label, it contains a mix of the herbs roots and leaves. There's an ongoing debate on whether just the roots are better or a mix is superior. And unsurprisingly, there are many studies directly comparing the two. Studies, even those on conditions like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, often use a mix of roots and leaves. In my opinion, I prefer the traditional root extract and suggest looking for a supplement labeled as KSM66. What are my conclusions after taking ashwagandha for four weeks? Honestly, I didn't feel anything. I took 500 milligrams every day at night and I didn't notice being less stressed or feeling more calm. My sleep didn't improve and I didn't notice a gain in strength or a muscle mass. This might be because I don't perceive my life as stressful. I mean, most stress is either self-made or the way you choose to perceive and react to stressful situations. The best anti-stress management, in my opinion, is exercise. As I sit for extended amounts of time at my job, I try to exercise for at least 20 minutes every day. While I'm out for a jog, I can already feel my mind calming down. As I have 120 pills in this box, I will finish it and update you if there are any changes to my general well-being. If nothing changes, I will discontinue the ashwagandha supplementation when the bottle is empty. Thank you for watching and let me know if you've tried ashwagandha because I'm very curious to learn about your experience.